what is the official name of this movie? It is like Dragon Ball, Ball Super Superhero. Super is it Superhero or Superheroes? I think it's Superheroes. Is it Hero or Heroes? It is Hero, apparently. Okay. It is one hour and 40 minutes. That did not feel like one hour and 40 minutes. See, when they said Superhero and it was going to be about Piccolo and Gohan, I legit thought that Gohan was going to take his role back up as the great Saiyan man, which is his superhero persona he had. Was that in Z? Yeah, it was in the Boo Saga. I remember you weren't into Dragon Ball at all until I just kept talking about it. I'm like, well, you should... I think it was like three years ago I recommended you the abridged version, and then a couple of months back, you just told me, like, yeah, I, mean, I got bored one day, and I watched all the Dragon Ball abridged episodes in one sitting at work, and I went, oh. <clears throat> I think it was two days later you said... Hey, Evan, should I watch Dragon Ball Super? I went, no. I don't hate Super. I just wouldn't recommend it. The first two arcs are just worse retellings of already established movies and shittier animation. You know, I just realized we're not talking about Dragon Ball Super Heroes. Hello, we're doing a review discussion on Dragon Ball Super Super Heroes. I, you know, Austin from my live streams, I always drag him out to watch the shit I like without asking what he wants to see or wants to show me. We always have these long discussions after we get done watching it, and we were getting ready to talk about Dragon Ball Super Superheroes on the way home, and I decided, wait, why don't we just do a video on it? We'll start spoiler-free really quick. Uh, here's the general plot of it all. So the Red Ribbon Army, if you've ever seen Dragon Ball, the original, you know who they are. So the Red Ribbon Army, they recruits Dr. Jiro's grandson to make androids. But Goku and Vegeta are off planet training at Beerus's place. So it's up to Piccolo and Gohan to deal with this problem. Problem is Gohan doesn't do shit anymore. So Piccolo has to carry the slack. That includes helping him with his kid. Action and humor ensues. Yeah, it was surprisingly funny. Like, there were quite a few moments where I was actually laughing out loud. Every time Piccolo used the cell phone and it had, like, a big, like, stuffed animal case and he's just, like, trying to talk into it like this. This is a 3D movie. They didn't animate it 2D like they normally do. But I didn't have any worries over the 3D animation because they've been making 3D Dragon Ball Z games for like 20 years now. So they've got like the character modeling down. I was a little worried like whenever they're driving in the desert and it looked really fucking bland. But then once they like swapped environments and there's like cliffs and a bunch of trees and stuff, it looked really good. So I thought they did really good with the 3D animation. I'm a sucker for like traditional animation styles. But that's very time and budget extensive. If this lets them have like a little more creative freedom with what's going on, I think that's like an acceptable loss for me. Well, they did the 3D animation good to where whenever the camera was oh, yeah. stationary, it looked like 2D animation the way they did the shading on the models. Like it's just only when the camera would like whip around and shit, that's when it would... I well, said the only a few of the best shots in the movie were when the camera's like whipping around. Oh well, yeah, over. one of the like the nicest looking shots, like even though it was like three D animated, is like they're at the the tower where uh Horns Tower with yeah the, the where Kami used to live and oh the lookout yeah the lookout Wait, isn't that the same thing? It's on top of right. Horns Tower, so yeah. Piccolo like does a dive off the top of it, and he's like going around it. Yajirobe throws like the helmet he was wearing, and like spins and it's like looks like glint lights glinting everywhere and it looks really really good oh yeah this is a really good looking movie if you were like having any hesitation of watching this movie because it's not traditional 2d animation i think oh. this is probably one of like the better looking 3d anime movies i've seen it kind of reminded me in some parts it's like you know death battle it'd be like if they doubled their production value and budget that's what it kind of reminded me of, and I mean that in a good way. I like the opening reminder. If you haven't seen Dragon Ball, this is oh, what yeah. the Red no, Ribbon was, Army is. It was great. As someone who hasn't seen any of Dragon Ball, because I just haven't made the time to sit down and watch Dragon Ball, I know of the Red Ribbon Army from the Android Saga, but it's nice to know like exactly you know like what was going on around it, because the movie plays very heavily into the Red Ribbon Army with a... Uh, Red Sun Magenta. Magenta. Yeah. And I like that they made him a little person like Red was. <laughs> He's on like a step stool or whatever. 
He does everything he can to not seem like the smallest man in the room. Yeah, I need to make the time to sit down and watch the original Dragon Ball. The original they, Dragon they showed, Ball is really good. I don't know if they reanimated it or if they just cut the animation and like touched it up to put cut it into the movie, but they intermixed some like the animation from the original Dragon Ball. That was uh, redone. It still looked really good. Oh yeah, no, the, all the flashback sequences are done in traditional 2D animation. Honestly, you don't really need to know much about like the Red Ribbon Army and whatnot. No, it, it covers it really well in the beginning. It's like the first like two, three minutes of the movie is just like all like, here's what you need to know. And it's setting up uh, Magenta and the uh, Red Pharmaceuticals to be the main villain. I just want to talk about stuff I liked without just it being basically plot elements. The movie was really funny. This is probably the funniest Dragon Ball movie out of all the ones I've seen. The movie went areas i wasn't expecting it to go because i've seen dragon ball i know like all the usual tropes they do so i thought oh they're gonna do this they're gonna do and like 90 percent of the things i was expecting them to do they didn't go that direction which i thought was i really liked that it did really good at like subverting any expectations you had set up like if you watch a dragon ball like at all you don't expect Piccolo to have a, like a Metal Gear Solid moment. I think that was probably my favorite thing about this movie was how Piccolo focused it was. When I heard it was, this is going to be Piccolo and Gohan's movie, I'm like, oh, I really like Piccolo. I I do not like what they did to Gohan in Super. They tried doing a little bit of something at the end where they're in the tournament where Goku's like, yeah, Gohan, you'll be our team captain and whatever, but I'm just not a big fan of adult Gohan. So I like that it was more focused on what Piccolo is doing. Which is everything. Piccolo carries the movie until literally like the very end. Yeah. Piccolo is like moving the plot forward. Piccolo is like being like the butt of jokes as well as like the joke E onto like Bulma and like every other characters. They play off really well. Even like the new characters they introduced. Like Are you talking about like the androids or the people? Both of them. I, I like both of them well enough. That's the thing Toriyama's really always been good at. Toriyama's always good at creating new characters and just making you really like them. Like Beerus and Whis, they were introduced with Battle of Gods and they've become some of my favorite characters. I wasn't worried <clears throat> when I saw like uh, Jero's grandson, they called him Dr. Hito. Whenever they just first showed him and he looks like some knockoff, despicable me character, I was like, they're gonna win me over with him, but by the end of the movie, I'm like, wow, I really like this character. Even Magenta's henchman, uh... Carmine? <laughs> Carmine, yeah. He's got this henchman, Carmine, who has this ridiculous... The pompadour. Yeah, he's got the like pompadour. Like crazy pompadour. Yeah, and he's driving Magenta around in the car, and there's like a dome above the driver's seat, that way his hair doesn't hit the roof of the car. And then anytime Carmine's showing something to Magenta, it's like, yeah, we got this info, I got this video here, and then it's like, did you film your own intro and outro? And he's like, yeah. And it'll show the credit on the video he made, and it's like, edited, scoring, it's... written by Carmine, Carmine. And it'll be on Carmine channel on his YouTube. <laughs> like, yeah, on YouTube. And it'll have like 12 views, they show, views. Yeah, they show the views later. It's like, this has like four views, five views, 12 views. Nine views. Yeah, there was, there was a lot of attention to detail, too. It was like a lot of like little visual gags and like a lot going on. I like when they're driving the car whenever they're getting Dr. Uh, Dr. Hedo out of a uh, prison or whatnot and the car starts spinning for some reason and it's just like focus. It's like a groin shot for like 15 solid seconds and then it cuts over to the other guy and it's a groin shot of him while they're in the car just holding on. I just As it's just like spinning wildly down the street. Dr. Hedo's like how old is he? Is he like... I thought he uh, was 24. He's, he can't be like no, he was, super old. Is 24? Said, yeah, I think he was 24. But he's like really small. And like fat. Yeah. And he's like constantly eating knockoff or Oreos. He's there's like, like a lot of attention to detail with these Oreos. Like there's like a shot where it's like they're talking. And then it's a hard focus on him like taking the Oreo apart. And like using the part without the cream to scoop some of the cream onto it. And it leaves like this little valley of... As like they're having a really important plot discussion. And it's just focusing on him dissecting his Oreos. We've talked about Red Ribbon Army, Dr. Hito, Magenta. Let's talk about... Well, we talked about Piccolo. Oh, Pan. I really liked Pan, Pan? in that. Yeah. I, I have uh, memories of like vague childhood memories of GX and so like I liked Pan in that even what little I saw you mean GT GT 
Why did I say GX? I don't know. Vague childhood memories of GT. And I liked Pan in that. So, like, seeing Pan as, like, a hyper three-year-old could have, like, been obnoxious really quick. But it was handled really well. Oh, yeah. Pan's cute as shit. Especially when she's interacting with her uncle Piccolo. Like, Gohan and Videl are too busy, so Piccolo has to go pick Pan up from preschool or whatever. It's funny. Well, and that's a great, like character moment too because that's like the exact mirror of what was happening when gohan was a child except instead of being off fighting like goku was gohan is off studying and doing his doing a report on ants the saiyan ants that go super saiyan i like that uh, little touch they did at the beginning where it shows pan training with piccolo and i'm like oh he's about to beat the fuck out of this kid and he he, he restrains himself and i'm like that Nice character development, Piccolo. I mean, he smashes her into a rock. She can dig it, she's a Saiyan. Which reminds me of a nice little joke they did when you said with uh, Goku's off training while Piccolo's raining Gohan, uh, <coughs> raising Pan. And Pan's like, she brings up her grandpa Goku, and then he just makes he's that- He's confused. He's confused, he goes, grandpa, oh, Goku. So that were, yeah, he was like, Pan's like, yeah, grandpa. And he was like, grandpa, oh, Goku. As in like, I'm Grandpa. <laughs> Which he, like, kind of is. Like, the, I know they made that joke on a bridge when Cell's like, I'm going to kill your dad. And Goku's like, hey. And Cell's like, no, the green one. <laughs> it's a good joke. Like, Goku's a shitty father. People on the internet that are defending Goku for being like, oh, he's got to fight to save the planet. Even if he did, that doesn't <laughs> give you the excuse to be as neglectful as a parent and spouse as Goku really is. I like how we started this off, I was like, we're going to talk about Dragon Ball Super Superheroes now, we're just talking about just fundamental things with Dragon Ball. We're getting there. Like, like yeah, I don't know how long this is going to be, I don't know what I'm going to edit out, I'm going to try to keep this focused on, like, the review. Speaking of Goku and Vegeta, you told me, it's like, because they're off training, and they've got Broly with them now, and Goku's sparring with Broly, and Broly's getting ready to snap, and Goku's like, hey, wait, wait, no, hi, hold, hold like, on. He's like, hey, hey, stop. He's like, don't, don't do that. Like, they, they're they just making Broly tag along with him, like the anti-social kid. He's like, I don't want him. They're the making really good use of Broly. That. The only problem there is, like, Broly's so insanely powerful, and that kind of is a power scaling thing. How strong is the next bad thing they're going to fight if they can theoretically just call on Broly? It could be a thing of they can't call on Broly because Broly Because he's going to go crazy again and destroy the planet. That'd be, a, that'd be a decent workaround. I like how they got the one issue. I, the one question I had is like, why can't Goku and Vegeta just blip back there if something bad happens? Like it does. I feel like I should. we should talk more about the plot. Red Ribbon Army recruits him and he makes these androids. But the, the little twist I liked is that he's... Dr. Hedo is not a bad guy. He idolizes superheroes. So he makes these androids. They're like superheroes. They have the capes and everything. Like the Sentai campiness they to They're super campy. One of them, they even, like, they point it out in the movie whenever he, like, does an attack. It has, like, the automatopoeia, the like... comic book sound effects. The blam, the wham, and go... And the uh, piccolo is like, why can I see his sound effects? And then later it's gets... shown that it's it's a hologram that he has go off whenever he hits somebody, so... <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that. That's yeah. great. Yeah, it showed, like, the fuzziness of it when Piccolo's fighting him another time. It's That's really... great. Yeah, uh, the two... Uh, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. Yeah, he made two superhero androids. He likes Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. And, and he had like, it, they had like like a single shot where it's like there's like... I want to say like four or five other little tubes where there could have been other Gammas. And I think they were going to make Gammas for each of the, the Z fighters or the Z fighters that needed it. Yeah. To get him recruited, the Red Ribbon Army like lies to Dr. Hedo. He's like, that. Capsule Core is evil. Bulma has these evil aliens working working for her and all the bad stuff the last year is because of these aliens and Dr. Head was like what I had no idea so he makes these superhero androids that think they're they're the good guys when really they're working for this piece of shit company and that's where the conflict came from I wasn't expecting that I just thought it was oh Red Ribbon Army made some evil androids that are gonna take over the world so whenever they brought that element up to him like oh I like that I wasn't expecting that well, and they kind of did. They felt like Sentai heroes. They felt like over the top and just really fun. It reminds me of when Gohan was the great Saiya man. I like, they went that same element with it that I really dig. Gamma 1 and Gamma 2, I was not 
I didn't have any expectations for this movie, but I came out of it really liking those two. I like that they give just that little, that little when they're just showing the family history. And they show Dr. Jarreau's wife, and it's Android 21, and I think everybody caught that. Especially the people sitting next to us. Yeah, they were a bunch of nerds. It was funny because... I really like Dragon Ball, but I can restrain myself. You owe it to yourself as a Dragon Ball fan if you haven't. Go watch a Dragon Ball movie with a packed audience. It will be one of the funnest theater experiences you have. It was like the most diverse crowd you can have when you're watching it. There were like five-year-olds. I think the couple, a couple rows in front of us, they looked like they were in their 60s. Just everybody's having a good time laughing at all the jokes and talking. Yeah, everybody was laughing. Oh. oh, yeah, I actually have a note for that big crowd pleaser. Very diverse crowd of all ages. It felt like I was in a giant reaction video. <laughs> it really did. Like something crazy would happen and some dude 20 rows back would go oh shit no bro what it, yeah it was good it was it was a nice experience this isn't really a big spoiler or anything but it's probably like one of my favorite like audience moments we had is last movie frieza comes to earth to get the dragon balls and whatnot so after that incident happened what happens is bulma has people it's their full-time job to be grabbing the dragon balls so that they can make wishes and make them go away so nobody else can use them for bad purposes it's revealed that bulma has been using shenron for cosmetic upgrades and doing enhancements on herself so they summon shenron at one point in the movie and piccolo only needs to make one wish and he gives the other two to bulma and bulma's like i want to be curvier i want I think the wording is like, my bum is looking a little flat. I want Can be... you make it a little more pert? And Shenron is like, a pert bum. And then she's like, cool. And then after Shenron leaves and whatnot, Bulma's like, wait a second. Why didn't we use our wish to bring Goku and Vegeta here? And then Piccolo goes, shit! And it's like, well, guess I gotta go back to Red Ribbon and sneak around. And then some dude 20 rows up went, you ain't gonna sneak around with that thick ass. <laughs> I just lost my shit. It was a very fun crowd pleaser. I think the row behind us, I, I could tell this kid dragged his mom to, <laughs> who had no idea what Dragon Ball was. So for like the first 20 minutes of this movie, he was explaining who everybody was <laughs> and what was going on. Then after a while, he just stopped talking. I didn't catch any of that. I did, and I wasn't. I was like I thought so it was, focused on the movie. I thought it was so cute. This is a really fun and funny movie. I was not expecting it to be anywhere near as funny as it was. You have to do something different, like coming off of Super Broly. That movie is everything that a Dragon Ball movie needs to be. Like, they get punched so hard, it breaks the physical reality around them. Yeah. Like, if that's not peak Dragon Ball, nothing is peak Dragon Ball. I think Broly was the better movie. Broly is everything you love about Dragon Ball is in this movie. And I'd say I'd find Broly to be more rewatchable than this one, but I had more fun watching this movie than I did the Broly movie, because Broly was the big epic slugfest, and this has a lot more elements to it. It's got, like, a lot more character moments to it. But it also does get down to the gritty. Like, oh, no, the, it does. The, yeah. The, the entire, like, what, like, last 20, 30 minutes of the movie yeah. is a giant fight. I think it's a pro with the uh, 3D animation. They're able to have these really good one takes of the cameras panning around as they're fighting. There's no cuts at all. And they can pan in and pan out, and it looks fluid because they do use... They used a little bit of 3D animation in the Broly movie, but that's against a 2D deal, so it stands out, but... Whenever it's all like this, it's just seamless, and it's... I would not mind another 3D Dragon Ball movie if it's done to the same effect they did this movie. Well, that's what I think the most interesting part about this movie is, is that it sets a good standard moving forward. Yeah. But not a standard that is unattainable. They know they're never going to top it, so they just don't try. It's a good movie, but it's also, like, good groundwork for, like, other movies that can, like, expand the world in fun ways or are just great fight movies. I actually think this movie being in 3D, it brings it up more than if it had just been a 2D movie because I think the Broly movie is as good as you could get with a 2D Dragon Ball movie. They, they showed all their cards, like, it had the POV shot, of Broly's perspective of fighting Goku. So, honestly, I welcome more 3D Dragon Ball movies. Well, and it's a little less intensive. 
it's it's a little cheaper to do and you're not having people drawing all the keyframes like you know they're still gonna do a lot of work like it, you can tell like a love went into this movie i mean i would say the only like models that just didn't 100 percent do it for me and uh, the 3d would probably just be goku and maybe but it's just the hair it's the way goku's hair goes out and all the angles it just and then they had like a little bit of white and gray and you could see the individual deals it just looked a little iffy that was probably the only 3d model that was kind of off for me but it wasn't bad if that is your like big hold up like oh it's not traditional animation which i'm kind of guilty of i was a little bit tentative i still wanted to watch it and i didn't i bring up going to see it first you brought wasn't i like hey there's a new dragon ball movie coming out and it's piccolo and gohan yeah and then i went yes and then it left my system and then you sent me like a text of like hey this is what piccolo's phone looks like i went see this is the important information we need to know <laughs> i think it was a couple of days ago my phone went off i was like reserve your tickets for dragon ball superhero and i went hey austin you want to go watch that and you're like yeah and i went all right cool let's go watch it we didn't go to an early screening because uh, i went to an early screening with broly and uh that was the most packed theater i've ever been in me i remember walking into the theater to see the broly movie and these guys went up to the ticket counter and I could tell they were out because they started walking back towards us. We crossed in the parking lot and they're like, hey, yo, man, you ain't going to get any tickets. It's like, oh, I bought my thing two weeks ago. I'm good. And he went, shit, and kept walking. So whenever we went into here, I remember telling you ahead of time, I was like, oh, you're going to love watching a, a Dragon Ball movie with a, a Dragon Ball audience. It wasn't completely packed, but we did there sit. Was enough people. We sat like right before like the lower lip mm -hmm. because I wanted a good seat. But yeah, I'm pretty sure all the seats behind us were pretty full. I do think this is going to like probably top the box office this weekend. I can't oh, really definitely. think of anything that is going to be able to beat it. This will probably be the heavy hitter for the week. Maybe the next couple of weeks even. I can't think of anything. Maybe. Nah, I give it like two weeks and then Top Gun takes top spot again. I talked about it quite a bit with different people at work today. And the more I talked about it, the more I realized I really did like this movie. Like it was not just like an enjoyable viewing experience that I kind of wrote off like I really enjoyed the movie and like assuming it's a standard they follow going forward like I'm really excited to see what they do next I hope they do more Dragon Ball movies that aren't Vegeta and Goku focused like yeah I like doing movies with Goku and Vegeta especially now that they've got Broly with them and anything that involves Beerus and Whis but it was smart of them to mainly make this this is Piccolo and Gohan. As much as I love the other Z Warriors like Krillin and Tien, it's like you can't justifiably power scale them up to be contenders on Piccolo and Gohan's level. So it was smart of them to, it's like, yeah, it's not, it's not Goku and Vegeta, but they didn't get everybody back together because that would have just been too much. Well, they came really close to getting everybody back together. Well, they were smart. They had 18 and Krillin because... They had the ones that could conceivably stand up. Yeah, I mean, most of them were in the Tournament of Power arc. I sh they, they always bring that back up with, like, Goku and Vegeta. It's like, yeah, Jiren was really strong and blah, blah, blah. It's like, most of the Z fighters were in the Tournament of Power, but... And they kind of had to power scale them up a little bit, but... It wasn't too BS, but I'm all... They, they made it work really well in this. I guess this will conclude the spoiler-free section of this discussion. Uh, we both really liked the movie. I definitely recommend you go see it. I mean, if you're a Dragon Ball fan, you're probably going to go see it. But if you're just holding off on it because of the animation change, uh, nah, it's seamless. It works very well. Good crowd pleaser, really funny. Not as good as the Broly movie, but I'd say this is probably my second favorite Dragon Ball movie. I just think it goes Broly, this, then Battle of Gods, and anything after that I really could care less for. So yeah, no, good movie. Earns its spot in the lore of Dragon Ball for me. So yeah, I liked it, Raptor. I told you I'd tell you what I thought about it. It was good, Raptor. It, it, was, it was worth watching. Go watch it. Don't fucking say I'm not going to watch your video because I don't want to be spoiled we here's the spoiler free section asshole all right now on to spoilers austin now on to spoilers all right like i said i really liked the uh the gammas really enjoyed the game like i was not expecting like by the time gamma gets killed off i i heard the the kid in the row behind us whenever gamma 2 died he went gamma no i remember i heard that i heard that yeah no i i i was even sad when gamma 2 died like i was like 
Oh, I liked Gamma too. <laughs> they would have fit really fucking well into the ongoing ensemble. Like, uh, they, hey, Dr. Teto, do you want to come, or Keto or whatever, do you want to then... come work for Capsicorn? And Gamma, Gamma 1, he can, he can be a great security guard. It's like, it would be great if Gamma 2 was there too. They would have been a really good fun addition. They can always rebuild him. He's an android. Yeah, but then it kind of takes away the... The meaning behind the death? Yeah, the meaning behind his sac... It'd be like if yeah, they remade fair. Android 16. It's like, well, there went his sacrifice. Well, no, because that's, they're androids, right? Yeah, they're androids. Which means they were part of something else. It's Dragon Ball. Does that even mean anything? Does Android mean anything in the Dragon Ball universe? Well, remember in the beginning of the movie, they're like, yeah, he's been dig He dug up these corpses and then he had them work at a gas station. So oh, yeah, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Hedo did that. <laughs> yeah, that was the thing. I wasn't expecting Dr. Hedo to just be a full-blown good guy who just kind of just did the wrong thing. I was, when he's not, I was expecting him to be a maniac. When he walked out of the prison and they threw, they were throwing shit at him whenever he was walking out of the prison. So he just throws a freaking... He pulls a fucking grenade out of his bag and just, like, lobs it behind him. Like, just fucking throws it and, like, blows shit up. I was not expecting him to be a good guy from that. But they set him up fairly well. Like, he's, like, cover all their bases where he's, like... He, he, he kind of struck me as, like, a misunderstood kid for the most part. Yeah, which made it more funnier when they say he's 24 years old. I went, that is hilarious. My favorite is every time Dr. Jiro got brought up, Dr. Hedo was like, it's nice having a super genius work for you, isn't it? He's like, yeah, Dr. Jiro was a genius, but I am... A super genius. I like that B he made. And I like how that actually <laughs> played a, that played a part when it came back, and it just and they're getting ready to like do this, and then that B he made just stangs immediately the, kills the other guy, and then he's like, "I told just you." Immediately kills Magenta. He's like, oh, "Yeah, man, I told you. If, even if you it's enhance like, no yourself, what you do, it's gonna kill you. It's gonna ice you, man." Th that death goes on for like way too long. That has to have been. He's like monologuing while the dude is in the back just dying, and I'm like, "It has to have been terrible. I cannot imagine dying like that. Just like." He's like turning, like his face is like turning different colors. It goes from like the regular skin tone to and then this it goes dark to like, green. Yeah. It just go, it gradient shifts to this dark green. He just gets a little yellow and then he just like, he hits the button that re And then he sets out Cell Max. Hey, I'm a dumb, dumb idiot. And I uh, forgot to turn my OBS recording back on for a good chunk of the spoiler review. But don't worry, the camera over here works. You just have to stare at the back of my dumb ass head. I want to touch on just Piccolo's journey throughout the movie. Oh yeah, go for it. He's probably like, like I, I think I mentioned, he carries the movie, but he like does like everything throughout like 90% of the movie. Yeah. Like the movie wouldn't really happen if Piccolo wasn't there to like, yeah. Piccolo's always been a proactive character. He's always been like, even back in the day, like kidnapping Gohan because Goku can't raise a kid for shit he's like i gotta raise this fucking kid i gotta stop these sayings i guess i'll train the kid like they took it to the next level like he infiltrates the red ribbon army and the funniest he just he jumps these guys and he steals the uniform and he's just sneaking around and like most people would probably call this an issue but i like that He's like, oh, fuck, that's bad. And then the guy goes, what did you say? And he goes, uh, nothing. Or he just sneaks off to go do, like, more plot-relevant stuff. And, and he... it's, like, 30, 40 minutes later in the movie and, like, hours later. And they're like, dude, where have you been? And he's like, bathroom, man. Bathroom, I guess. And then I like the, oh, you're looking a little green. You sure you're okay? And he puts the little <laughs> he's just shield. A, of... He's just a Namekian under there. Or when they go to Gohan's house. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know all this stuff? Uh, I know so much about Mr. Satan's family. And I like that they're like, we don't know the true potential of Hercule Satan. And everybody <laughs> in the audience was losing their shit. Yeah, they did a really good job with, like, all this stuff. Like, there's, like, they're, like, Capsule Corps obviously evil because they're working with aliens. And then it's just a picture of, like, Trunks massacring Frieza. And there's just, like, a video, like, shaky cam video. Of, and then like, he just goes up and he goes... Whenever that happened, the fucking dude next to us went... <laughs> and I went, calm down. Speaking of, like, the audience, whenever... Whenever it just hard cuts to that shot of just Bulma bent under the table and the camera's, like, right here on her ass. And she's, and she's doing, like, shaking, like, looking back and forth for and stuff. Everybody like, behind us was just... <laughs> I mean, I almost wolf-whistled. 
I mean, I didn't care. They've been doing that to Bulma ever since Dragon Ball. I don't care. <laughs> I just thought everybody else found amusement in that. And whenever Bulma wished she was dummy thick, I thought, that's funny. I bet Vegeta's gonna come <laughs> home and go, Why is your ass fatter? Nice. <laughs> Are your eyelashes three millimeters longer? All right, I gotta cross up my Bulma being dummy thick. I think that's a fantastic running joke that they put in the Broly movie. I hope every time they use the Dragon Balls from this point on, they only need to make like one wish, and Bulma just gets the other two for whatever she wants. Shenron was great, like, he's like, I am the great Shenron, and then it's like, oh, it's Piccolo. It's Piccolo and Bulma. What do you need? Bulma, what do you want? Make me dummy thick. Okay. And then he just, just gets like... the fuck out of there. <laughs> no, speaking of, like, things being dummy thick and funny, whenever they're on fucking Beerus's planet, and then chi -like comes walking out, <laughs> fucking Beerus starts hitting hard on her. He's like, you... You can stay. He straight up fucking calls her cute in the Japanese version of it. He's just like, you're cute. <laughs> I'm like, fucking damn, Beerus got game. And then Whis is like, yeah, Lord Beerus has a type. How have none of you not noticed this yet? They're like getting ice cream or whatever. He's like, hey, you want to come get some ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> and then and Goku and Vegeta are sparring while they're eating ice cream or whatever. And then they create that wave and then Beerus makes this like, <laughs> bubble shield appear so they don't get wet. He's like, Lord Beerus, that was very uncharacteristic of you. Were you. Was there maybe someone you didn't want to get soaking wet? Just shut up and eat your ice cream, damn it! Beerus, Chilai, Broly. Oh yeah, like that. fight. Goku and Broly oh, yeah, are just... fighting and that stops immediately. Which I'm glad they just gave us a little taste of it. I'm, I'm glad that that was like... That felt to me like a joke in and of itself. Like, oh, I bet you were expecting a big fight here. I like that they're like, alright, the three of you are gonna spar. But Vegeta's like, F fucking Broly, man, we can't do that shit. What if he slips? And it's like, okay, Goku and Vegeta, you fight. And then it shows this long fight scene between Goku and Vegeta, and then... It cuts back. Well, it's important to note that they're not allowed to use any power-ups or projectile attacks. Yeah, they're just sparring. So they're allowed to fly around and hit each other. Yeah, and then it just, like, cuts away from that. And I remember when the credits hit, you were like, you know, I know you gotta have it in your movie because you gotta have Goku and Vegeta f do something. And then after the credits, it's shown that they have been fighting the entire movie and they're so worn out that they can just barely get a punch in. And Vegeta actually finally wins against Goku, which is... Everybody in the theater fucking cheered. Yeah, because that's the thing. Goku has technically never beaten Vegeta. They have always fought to a stalemate. It was a clear winner and Vegeta fucking won. And that... I think my heart grew three sizes. Well, they were talking about Vegeta practicing, like, the new technique that he got from Jiren? Well, it wasn't like... a, it wasn't, he didn't get it from, he just watched him. Yeah, yeah. That's, he observed, that's he's like, he's always calm until he's ready to strike. And then Whis is like, ah, you guys, you boys finally got it. And that's the end of my notes. You got any? My notes just say orange piccolo. Before we went to see this movie, like, a couple weeks ago, you said, Evan... Piccolo has a new form, and it looks really, really funny, and then you were getting ready to show me. I said, no, don't show me. I just want to see it for myself. And Piccolo gets a power boost from Shinron, because they, they buff Shinron, and he awakens Piccolo's potential, and then... So, like, so there's, like, a big bolt of, like, I guess it's chi or whatever, and it's, like, yellow-orange, and it's, like, radiating out of, like, the bottom of this ravine that Piccolo is in. And then, like, the... Namekian symbol or whatever appears on his back and he flights up he like floats back up and he like tanks one of Gamma's hits or whatever like one of the things they always do in the anime but like I was like I knew the the orange piccolo was coming and I saw the Namekian symbol and I'm like orange piccolo is here and I'm like looking over watching Evan I'm like when is it orange piccolo and he's covered in cheese so you can't like see his color and like the chi fades and it's orange piccolo and like I don't know if like how hard you laugh because I kind of want to I see started, what happened. See what happened was I started chuckling. I was, it began but as I was starting to jog with my laughter you fucking sprinted. 
You lost your shit so fucking hard. You were wheezing and just laughing and- Orange Piccolo fucking kills me. It is the most atrocious thing since like Saiyan- Super Saiyan 3. I fucking hate Orange Piccolo. It is my I fucking nightmare it. demon. I loved it so fucking- I was laughing so goddamn hard. I think everybody in the theater was laughing. <laughs> That's the best part. Nobody took Orange Piccolo seriously. He looked so f because whenever he got his initial power boost from from Dende and Shenron, and he looked a little more. Mm, and I was like, that looks silly. And then I thought that was it. But then whenever the <laughs> fucking like transformation jaw, and he's like twice as thick. <laughs> and his fucking antenna just like like a forty five degree <laughs> angle, and he just looks so fucking serious. And his voice gets even deeper, <laughs> and he just looks so dummy. <laughs> it's like Bulma isn't the only one that wished the dragon would make her thicker. What? He looked, what? Right, who, who made that? And they were like, That was Toriyama. <laughs> <laughs> that was Akira Toriyama. Like, they have, like, Akira Toriyama's, like, original sketch of it. Let me see if I can find it. Because I was wondering, what was he gonna look like? Like, what's so bad? I was expecting he was gonna look like the Abomination from The Incredible Hulk or something with, like, really pointy ears or some shit. It's and then the amazing. fucking Great Pumpkin rose above the mound. <laughs> and then I was just like, what the fuck is that? That's amazing. We were laughing the entire fucking fight of him taking his shit. Well, like, you know, like, that's the power-up, right? That's that's how like Dragon Ball usually goes. It's like, no, I didn't mind that. That was funny. It's just I like that we were laughing over the entire portion of that <laughs> fight. We were just I couldn't losing. stop. You couldn't stop, and I tried to stop, but then you kept going harder. <laughs> and then that brought me back, and then it started getting everybody around us, and then that's when I just blurted out, "It's the Red Book." <laughs> That's the original drawing. Like, it is like, it's like not good, like, it's, even to begin you know what with. It is? It's the black eye shadow. It, <laughs> he gets black eye shadow. And how bulk. He's like, like twice as wide. He's like so thick. It, it's amazing. I'm like, gonna call him Dummy Thick Piccolo. <laughs> I hate it, but I love it. Like, it's, it's like, great pumpkin piccolo. It's, it's like, it's. <laughs> That's terrible. If I was in charge of some that production, I would have never signed off on that. But as somebody who has to live in a world with orange piccolo, I accept it. He just looks so <laughs> stupid. It was the dumbest shit ever. And I'm glad we got to go watch that. I'm glad I had just these weeks of... These oh, weeks of me being like, Evan. Evan, piccolo's power up is something. And I went, really? And then... I just, my brain could not, I was not expecting orange. I thought it was going to be like a darker green or something. I'm like, why would Piccolo need a new form? The Mechians can just fuse or whatever. And then, um, <laughs> then I saw it, I'm like, I, I'm sorry forever considering another option. They turned the, the thickness slider they, up. Uh, literally, like, they just drug it to the farthest. Oh, I like that in the fight with Cell Max. They're like, Goku, I mean, Piccolo, remember that time you got really big? And he's like, I did. Oh, I did. That's something that, like, I wasn't expecting. Like, I I didn't, like, pay close attention. Like, I saw Somax's, like, brief design. Somax is fucking huge. I like that they just made him a raging monster. Like, yeah. We had all the personality with the Gammas and whatnot, so, and they all teamed up, so now they just, they just have to fight this monster. He's literally, like, literally, like, the regular people are, like, the size of his hands and feet. And he's just like bitch slapping everybody around. It's like Goten flies up and immediately just gets like backhanded. I was not expecting a kaiju fight in this Dragon Ball movie. And I really, really love the giant slug. And like as the more they're beating down on him, like half his body, the paint comes off. And yeah, just... oh yeah, that was kind of cool. <clears throat> and when they... After Gamma 2 does his sacrifice and is like he hits the... He, he, right he, as he was coming down, like, he raised his arm to block it from hitting and then his he head. And he through that. And he, like, broke through his arm, and, like, this entire half of his body is, like, unpainted. He still has a giant fucking mace on the end of his tail. Which I'm glad they put to use that. See, what I was expecting to happen, which <clears throat> I'm glad they did, I was expecting 
the Gammas were going to rush him, and he was going to do what Cell did to the original androids and absorb them, and then it would be like a closer, perfect Cell Max thing, and I'm so fucking glad they didn't do that. Yeah, no. The Cell Max is, like, perfect the way he was. He yeah. was, like... You know, and they were, like, slugging it out as everybody's flying around them, like, this is what I need. They pulled back the gag from Broly with the, the messed up uh, fusion dance, where yeah. it's like, oh, your fingers didn't touch. And then they're... they're diabetic go tanks or whatever but the thing is they're like oh we're stuck like this i guess we'll have to make use of it and then he goes out there then immediately gets bodied but they like keep yeah they use as a fucking ball and Dude. then they hit him back onto him and they do damage to him and they're like we can make this work gohan's form is pretty good yeah was... they they should tone back the hair i thought they were gonna kill piccolo off and i'm like they can just wish him back with the dragon balls or whatever but it's the thing of they just use them so we would have to wait a year. And I imagine that would be very emotionally scarring for Pam, who has never had anybody die around her. And I was like, oh god, we're gonna have that scene where Pan's crying over Uncle Piccolo, aren't we? But thankfully, he lived. That whole moment of where he's getting Pan's his just ass... just getting, like, he's getting, his ass blasted. And everyone's trying to help and they get destroyed too. And then he's still telling Gohan, he's like, not yet. I can still hold it out. And then Gohan fucking snaps. I'm like, all right, cool. And then I saw, like, the eyes turn red. I'm like, ooh, what are we getting? I legit thought for, like, a split second, I was like, oh, are we getting Super Saiyan 4? But then it showed the silver hair. I'm like, that looks really good. I just wish they would turn the hair length slider down by, they like... They need to... It could have been the same as Mystic Gohan. That's whenever he goes from Super, Super Saiyan, Saiyan to, to the... Yeah. Aura. Yeah, that was Gohan's deal. He goes Mystic. But I like how... They just kind of get Gohan back up to speed while he's like, Hey, Pan, scream and act like you're in pain. The dynamic between Pan and Piccolo is so it's, fucking I live cute. for those two. Like whenever they go to abduct Pan and <laughs> whatever. She just takes the fuck out of like a big bodybuilder guy. It's like at the preschool, he's like, Hey, Pan, we're gonna pick you up in place of your mother. She's busy. And Pan just fucking bodies him. And she's a fucking three-year-old. When, and the preschool teacher is just like, oh, oh fuck, my kid just assaulted somebody. And, and then just, somebody in the top of the theater went, bro, you got bodied by a <laughs> three-year-old. Pan just looks at the teacher and she's like, I didn't know that, man. And then Piccolo walks up. <laughs> and then we'd like to be secure when we pick up Mr. Satan's granddaughter. And the teacher's like, oh, okay. And then they're walking to the deal. It's like, Mr. Piccolo, why, or Uncle Piccolo, why do you look like that? Oh yeah, these bad guys are gonna try and abduct you and kill your dad. Uh, I'm doing some sneaking around, so just, you wanna be a part of it? She goes, yeah. I love like her snark as like a three year old. She's like, this is a no parking zone as their spaceship is like taking up like half the street. <laughs> they carry over that Piccolo can't fucking drive because it's non-canon, but there is an episode where Chi Chi makes Goku and, Vig and Piccolo Go get their goddamn driver's license. And they can't fucking drive. I like that that carried over into this. It's like, you can't drive, Uncle Piccolo. <laughs> He's like, I never got my license. The ship is like at a 45 degree angle at all fucking times. And then he somehow, he goes to land the shit inside the river <laughs> and he hits the tunnel. That was a great gag. That killed me. That, that was, there was a couple really like, really good ones. And like, just like the real quick like, Okay, he's picked up flying enough where he can land it. Just clips he the can't side. Of it. Land. <laughs> it's like I was not expecting it to be anywhere near as funny as it was. The gag with Gohan's glasses, he's got the great big fucking like egghead glasses. Yeah, and then And he's like, oh, I can't really see without them. And then he goes Super Saiyan and then he goes back and he's fighting, he loses the glasses and he's kicking ass, and then he goes back to it and he's like, I can't see without like and then Piccolo's like does going Super Saiyan fix your eyesight? I think the only time it went a little too overboard is where he tosses him the sensor beam and it takes like 15 seconds for him to drop it down the drain. He's like, did you just drop the sensor beam? He's like, I can't see without my glasses. <laughs> Would have been a better gag if it didn't take so long. Yeah, it took too long. It was just like they, play, they rested on it a little bit too long. I like the gag of the bee coming back and stinging the guy. That was, with. yeah. I really wanted a midget fight between those two. <laughs> I wanted a fucking Lord Farquaad versus the kid from Up slugfest between those two. I really wanted him to body this man. That would have been so fun. 
That would have been good. I was kind of expecting them to do it because I kind of forgot about the bee. There was a couple things I forgot about. Like, I forgot about the bee. There was something else I forgot about. I guess I must have forgotten about it, too. I think the callback I liked is when uh, Gamma 2 is fighting Piccolo for the first time. And he's like, he comes back, he's like, oh, guys, I destroyed him. He's like, cool, where's the body? Uh, I assume you you didn't make sure. You didn't check? You didn't check to make sure the body was dead. And he's like, no. Gamma 2 is getting ready to just rush in there. And Gamma 1's like, no, Gamma 1's getting ready to rush in there, too. And he's like, no, you got to... You have to save the doctor. He's like, what? Yeah, he's alive. Didn't you ever check to make sure? Yeah, that was a good one. That was like, that was not a callback I was expecting, and I'm glad to see that character growth from him. Yeah, no, I, I really liked the Gammas. I'm sad we're down. Gamma 2. Gamma 2 was obviously the gam, Gammy or Gamma. I didn't know how to, like, describe them, the Gammas, but whenever we got in my car in the parking lot, like, Evan, I was getting some serious Sonic the Hedgehog vibes from the Gamma. I, guess, I went, holy shit, that was it. That's Gamma what it was. 2 is like right off the bat where like he's like instantly quipping and I'm like Sonic. Is this Sonic? I like the where he's got the blaster and he's like doing like little like spins with it. He's like thumbing it around and I'm like, yo, we gotta revolve our ass a lot up in here. I was really iffy on the blasters. I'm like, oh that's a blaster, but when they started, like, using that shit against, like, Cell Mag, oh, yeah. I was they like, were, they, that's actually really cool. At first, I was, like, really annoyed by Gamma 2, but by, like, the third scene he was in, I'm like, I, he's already growing on me. I like it when he gets back from his fight with Piccolo, and he's just, like, saying, hey, my man, what's <laughs> he's just, up? like, talking to everybody, like, yeah! It's like, good, it's like, you did good, and I was like, yeah, man, thanks. It's like, I, I'm doing great, man, how are you doing? He's just shooting the shit with everybody, and they get back in there. This is the reason why I like going to English dubs of shit sometimes for like Dragon Ball just the one red ribbon soldier that was like the shortest guy in that lineup when their piccolo sneaks in and he has this heavy ass southern accent and I live for that she's like all right we're gonna go in there we're gonna go get her and then piccolo's like oh I know where we can go get her now who told you to speak out a lot, he's soldier? Like, he's like, you're too green, as in like inexperienced. <laughs> I don't really think there was an aspect of it I didn't like. The only complaint I would have with this movie is, I am a big Dragon Ball fan, but I feel like for somebody who isn't super into Dragon Ball, I will say the first quarter to third of this movie, it drags just a little bit when they're just getting it all set up like, Oh, so you're Dr. Jero's grandson. How about you come work for us and whatnot? Up until it like jumps over to like what's going on with like Piccolo and Pan and stuff. It's like, like it didn't bug me. We need this set up. And well, it's like, like it, it, I went in only knowing the basics of the Red Ribbon Army. Like I knew they existed. And that sets that up well enough where it's like, you don't have any more questions. No, they did a good job covering their bases, but somebody like me, it's like, all right, I get it. It's like obviously not going to be a Broly, but it wasn't aiming to be a Broly. I don't want every Dragon Ball movie to be a Broly. Exactly. Like, you can't outdo that. That was the big Dragon Ball spectacle. Well, and like, the best part is, is like, the fight wasn't anything to slouch at. Like, we're upselling the humor because that's what drew me in. But like, the last like 30, 40 ish minutes of the movie is just a giant drag out fight with Cell Max as he is like I I'd say before that. Round two with the, oh, the gammas. Yeah, with gammas and like the when Gohan them. like he's pissed and whatever and he gets there and he jumps out and he lands and all the rain stops just for a little bit. That was fucking cool as shit. The particle effects in this were really good. Like whenever Gamma Two just shoots up there and he just comes blasting down and all the blue and the red and it's merging to make this purple like, the auras and the particle effects in this looked really good. And I like that whenever Gohan finally, like, breaks and goes mystic, that he, like, just shatters the dome. And yeah, because they're in their, like, a, like, a, like, a fake lake dome where it's, like, a holographic thing that they can, like, go in and out of. Yeah. And, like, that looked really good in and of itself. As, it, like, they go through it and it, like, bubbles. But, like, when it shatters, I was, like... Holy shit, that's and then, fucking awesome. And then whenever they go to Gohan's house and then they do the callback where Piccolo slides on the window. <laughs> like, there's the nails like, on chalkboard on the window. And then he's like, yeah, we have your kid. And Gohan goes out there. Or he flicks the gun away at first because he's not <laughs> taking it seriously. And then they show him we've kidnapped your daughter. And he gets so fucking mad at this dome in the... He, he like, 
breaks the earth. his fucking ground. And it just keeps growing and growing. And then the fucking house slides <laughs> in on it. And then they do a callback to that in the credits where Videl comes home and it sees the house. And she's like, what the fuck? I really like Gohan. Like, as, like, only watching abridged and, like, bits and pieces, like, foggy memories of the Boo arc. In the universe, he's got the potential to be, like, the strongest character, but, like, he's also so much more of a compelling character than adult Goku. <clears throat> adult Goku just wants to fight, because he's a Saiyan. Like, that's what, like, the universe justification is, like, that's what they live for. That's just what they do. Gohan just wants to be a guy. They the served his character really well. They did a good, a way better job of bringing Gohan back into the spotlight as a as a fighter than they did in Super with the universe survival arc to where Goku drags him into it and whatever. Because, you know, after that was over, he went back to doing his academic whatnot. And Piccolo's just always hammering him. And it in a was like, hey, what happens if Goku and Vegeta aren't here? You gotta step up and defend the planet. And then this was the good way for Gohan to get back onto the saddle. I like that they used Pan as a way to get Gohan over his barriers again for him to get through those links again. Well, then they did that again with Piccolo right before he went Beast. Okay. Where, like, even the viewers, like, oh shit, Piccolo is dead. And then Gohan sees it. <laughs> yeah, and, like, freaks the fuck out. And, like, that's a very, like, Gohan moment. That's what made the first time Goku goes Super Saiyan really cool. Where it's like, my friend just died. Like, I just lost something. And that straw breaking the camel back is the moment. They did it, like, oh, they just did it again. They did it differently this time. Because it's not just, it's not Piccolo running in to right. save Gohan. It's Piccolo's like, Gohan, you can do this. Just focus. Yeah. I'll hold him off until then. So they, I was worried they were going to do that callback of yeah. somebody sacrificing. It's like, no, worked together so Gohan could come in with the clutch. Yeah. And that fucking special beam cannon that Gohan does was fucking so fucking great. perfect. It was it's so like, good. And then after it's all over, Piccolo's like, that move you did, what was that? It's like, <laughs> it, it was the special. I was just practicing. I was, maybe I might have practiced that in private. And I was like. All right, that I can see. I love that, that even though I can see Gohan just like yeah, he's not a fighter anymore, but he has such respect for Piccolo that <laughs> just like in like secret in the dead of night, he's just like out of the woods. He's like special beam cannon. <laughs> oh, I like the fucking little callback to where whenever he goes to Gohan, so that was the first time he does that, and he goes in there and he's like, hey, bruh, I got why do I gotta pick up Pam? And then whatever he's like, also why don't you train anymore? And then he does his little clothes beam on Gohan. And the weighted armor actually... Like, sags him down. Like, I I like that he didn't take it off either. He's just doing his work <laughs> in the weighted armor. But again, that's a very Gohan thing. Like, the challenge is already on the table. Oh, I just thought he was just always so caught up with his shit, he just didn't even notice. Yeah, I mean, that too. But the Saiyan ants... Dude, those fucking Saiyan ants... That was... That better come back. That that better be, like, at the very least, a gag in the next film. There better at least be Ant Go. going Super Saiyan. <laughs> the Queen Saiyan Ant. Oh, God, they could do, like, a Hunter Hunter ripoff with the Chimera Ant arc. I don't even know anything about that. I just want to see Saiyan Ants. Yeah, they true. even have the little hair. Did they? I thought they just turned to gold. I thought they had the hair. I'm pretty sure they had the hair. You look at that. I'm glad it freezes in the movie just one time, and he's just standing in front of his window, just kind of just twirling in place. They're like, guys, you know, he's in the movie twice. He gets murdered by trunks. <laughs> I can't find the Saiyan ants on Google. Well, I'll buy the Blu-ray. I'll we'll, keep looking. <laughs> well, 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 like, all right, Austin, I got the Blu-ray. That's in the hands on the Saiyan ants. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I'm yeah. going to buy you an orange piccolo figure <laughs> for work at your desk. I'll put it on my desk. I have shown everybody at work around me that, like, is, like, in my demographic. I have said, look at orange piccolo. I'm glad that they keep, like, Bulma and shit around, and they're still super relevant to the plot without... Well, like, Krillin did stuff. I like that they did an equal amount of shitting on Krillin, but they had Krillin do stuff. It's like Krillin comes in, it's like, oh boy, it's Krillin. Even Krillin like shits on himself too. He's like, yeah, you guys fight. I'll, 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 I'll make <laughs> oh, sure Bulma and Pan are safe. And then he's like, oh, 
screw it, I'm gonna get in there. And whenever he jumped out of Bulma's ship and it showed him like flying around, hyping himself up, I'm like, he's about to get blasted by Cell Max here. And now he fucking lands. Not only does he hit him with the Destructo Disc, he's also able to do the Solar Flare so that Gamma 2 can get a little closer with his attack. I'm like, they gave Krillin just the right amount to do. It could have like cut out Goten and Trunks, but like, that it was fun to did. see them. I love that fucking fake out they did where Pan's flying around and then she flies past them and they get a good fusion going. And then it doesn't show Goten <laughs> at and, all. And everybody was fucking waiting for the after credits and after it went, oh, we didn't get to see them. And I was like, I didn't really want to see them, to be I honest. Don't, like, I don't uh, care about Goten. Well, like, maybe we'll get a Gotenks movie. I might pass on that one. <laughs> all right, if they're adults. Maybe, but when they were like little kids, just no. If you told me, hey, Evan, there's a new Dragon Ball movie. Really? Yeah, Trunks and Goten are going up. No. Uh, we covered pretty much everything I wanted to touch on. Oh, uh, the one. Th like, I haven't gone back and listened to it yet, but I noticed like in the particular part when it's round two with like Gamma and Piccolo and like he lands and he does his first initial boost against him. He's like, oh, you've gotten stronger. And then Gamma like fucking tanks him and like hits them down on that platform and they're like sliding. I'm just listening. I'm like, I really like this soundtrack. I haven't listened. I didn't. I, I don't. I'm not an active listener with soundtracks in movies. I'm not. I don't have an utterly attention span for it. That's fair. But I'm just like, oh, whoa, whoa, people getting punched. Yeah, but like it wasn't as standout-ish as the Broly movie to where it's literally screaming at you, go, 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 Broly. But I'm just like listening to this instrumental. It's like going really hard. I'm like, this sounds really well. Sounded really good in general. All of the sound effects were spot on. Other than like a few moments where like the joke doesn't quite land because they like linger on it too long. Like with the Gohan and the Sensu. I also thought they lingered on the car spinning out a little bit too long. Yeah, but I was just like, <laughs> it's his crotch. And then it just, <laughs> and then it, it was going like, okay. But then it just, it's like, it's his crotch and then it like cuts the like, it's, it's his crotch too <laughs> and they didn't linger on his too long i just thought it was like toriyama went in there and went hey just move the camera there and they went what <laughs> just do it it's like okay there's... hold it okay now put it on his crotch <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple moments but like the jokes all land it had like well. a nine, 90 percent of the jokes landed for me the only one i can think of is just the gohan blindly dropping they played it up too much to help Oh, 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 if they just tossed it and he just went, and then it went straight down into the pit and they just stared at each other. I think other. that would have been funnier. Yeah, that would have been funnier. If they had just done that and he's like, did you just drop that? It's like, I can't see without my glasses. And he went, God damn it, take mine. If they had just done that, that would have been good. So yeah, Toriyama, the movie shit, that joke didn't land. I'll go watch the next one. You know what? I'm okay with another orange piccolo. Orange or piccolo. <laughs> you just... I hope that Piccolo gets more and more forms and each one is more dummy thick than the last to where you can't even fucking I hope I hope that Piccolo's ultimate form he looks exactly like Lord Guru he's just in a fucking wheelchair just pans all grown up and shit and Piccolo just looks exactly like Lord Guru. Gohan picked up the slack and now and Piccolo didn't have to fight anymore and he's just becomes this diabetic orange blob. He's just always in his final form. Just becomes the final ultimate great pumpkin Piccolo. Well like I'm excited to see what they do with like Pan. What are they gonna do with that crazy three year old? They could do a whole series Goku and Vegeta are off training. Gohan's doing his academic deals. I wouldn't mind a Piccolo and Pan just like... Like a spinoff show? Yeah, just like run it a season. It could be like old school Dragon Ball. She's just off on an adventure. I'd be fine I'd with be that. I'd be down with that. That'd be fun to watch. Like it would obviously have to just be like minute shit that like Piccolo and Gohan wouldn't worry about. Maybe Piccolo could be training Gohan in like the hyperbolic thing and it's like... What's Pan up to? I mean, whenever they eventually do it and it sucks, don't c come back and say it was my fault. I mean, fault. she's genuinely a menace, and I love them for making her a three-year-old fucking menace. If we can just get, like, a three-year-old menace running around in a magic magic power girl anime, I'd be fine with that. So do it, Toriyama. 
Or just keep making he's, movies. Y'all seem to do that a lot better. These than are free. These are free ideas, though. Like, just hit me up. I don't even need. I don't even need credit. I do. <laughs> Written by Akira Toriyama and Ebel the Pebble. Creative inspiration, Ebel the Pebble. Yeah. Orange Piccolo. Orange Piccolo. <laughs> my, Piccolo is my... sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> he just opens your door, ducks into the frame, and just. And he just gets over you and he's just glaring at you. And that's all he fucking does. I need therapeutic sessions to get Orange Piccolo out of my inner psyche. He haunts my dreams and then sh shattered my will being. Now you see what I've been living with. I think that is the hardest I have laughed all fucking year. Like, I was like folded up in my seat in the theater while you were like. Because you were, like, trying not to be too big of a distraction. Because I, you were trying to muffle it so nobody would be focused on us. But I started coughing and shit. <laughs> like, so that is the hardest I have laughed in a theater in a long time. You, you know. I want you to Photoshop Orange Piccolo standing in the corner of a room. <laughs> he's, just, he's just standing there. Menacingly. Menacingly. Why does he look so pissed? <laughs> it's the jawline and the eyeliner. Orange Piccolo <laughs> is beautiful. Thank you, Toriyama. That's the best contender I could say about this movie is Orange Piccolo must be seen on the big screen. You need to have this hundred foot wide just monstrosity staring right the fuck down at you just staring into your soul. I knew it was coming. I'm like, we're gonna get Orange Piccolo. I was waiting. I was waiting with bated breath just for everyone else's reaction because like Gohan Beast was cool like if you're like a Dragon Ball fan you're like oh shit but Orange Piccolo was like why is he fucking orange why out of all the colors they picked orange the most opposite color of green you could fucking go I, orange. did they just like pull out a color wheel on like went, what color Orange. orange. And then Gohan's like, you need a cool name for it. Like Super Saiyan. And Piccolo's, I think I'm just gonna call it Orange Piccolo. And Gohan's like, okay. <laughs> orange Piccolo. I'm genuinely glad he's off my chest. And into my head. <laughs> Every time I close my eyes, I see him staring at me. <laughs> 